Hi everyone, Dan Muller here with quick tips for Spark AR Studio version 132. This one's very cool. Uh, you'll notice that I'm here in my scene. I have a block at the root, so I'm not in a proper project scene at the moment. I'm inside a block editing it, and you'll notice I have a scene render pass here inside the block. We also now, whoa, if I can learn how to type, have shader render passes available inside blocks as well. Uh, so yes, you can now put your uh, scene and shader render passes inside blocks. Uh, the way that you can get it all to work is if inside uh, you select your block root, add an output for the render output that you want from that render pass. And then once you bring that block into your patch editor inside your root scene, you'll be able to grab that output and wire it into the rest of your visual shading graph. Uh, so this is going to give you even more flexibility, even more power with blocks. At this point in time, we've started adding so many features to them uh, that they really are something you should be getting into if you haven't started exploring them just yet. Being able to abstract away chunks of kind of visual shading logic and so on into a block so you can easily drag and drop it into scenes later uh, is really going to accelerate your workflows as well as making it a lot easier uh, to work in teams if you're sharing these blocks back and forward with other people. We've been doing a soft rollout on this next feature over the last couple of versions and it's now available for everyone. It's now much easier to switch between different projects that you might have open at the same time in Spark AR Studio. So you can see here I have a big shiny one in my scene. This is called Project 1. And if I go to the window menu, I've now got uh, the different projects that I have open listed just here. Small change, but it's something that a lot of you have been asking for for a long time. And you can see here I have a Project 2, a second project open. So if I click on this one, uh, there we go. We uh, quickly just switch over to the second Spark project. So it's going to make it a bit easier to navigate around your workspaces if you're working in multiple uh, versions of Spark at the same time through that new window menu item. If you're running the Spark AR extension for Visual Studio Code, you're now going to be able to debug effects that you have mirrored to the Spark AR player on Android devices. So a lot of you have been asking for that uh, debug flexibility uh, when working with player, just as you are when you're working in Studio. Uh, we've listened and this is now there for you. So step by step, we're making it easier and easier to debug your scripting in Spark. For those of you creating games, sometimes you might find it a little bit tricky to work out which direction your objects are facing in after they've been rotated uh, and, and then building further animations on top of that. So it might be the direction a car is driving in, it might be a plane flying through the sky, basically scenarios where we have uh, dynamic animation controlling something and we need to make sure we're uh, calculating that forward vector of the object. So to help there, we've created a new uh, rotate vector patch. Uh, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Uh, if you're looking for this kind of solution, that is, hopefully it's going to help you out. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at it. Basically, we input a vector. So what is the forward vector of that object? And then we apply a rotation to it to get it to return the rotated vector. So what that new forward direction is. Uh, so let's take an example. Uh, we know that this direction forwards and back uh, is Z. So if I'm pointing this way, I'm currently pointing in positive Z. So I can put a one in positive Z for the uh, vector, the input vector uh, of my finger here. If I were to rotate my wrist here by negative 90 degrees, I'm now pointing this way, uh, which is negative X, at least as far as this screen space is concerned. So if I rotate, that was by 90 degrees, what we should get as our rotated vector, there we are, is negative one. So we've taken that, what was the positive one on the Z axis, rotated it by 90 degrees, and that gives us negative one on the X. So if you are doing a bunch of game work, you're gonna find this super handy. If you're not, it may just be going straight over your head, totally fine. Uh, I don't do a lot of games work like this myself. Uh, but for those of you who are looking for it, hopefully you find this one really helpful.
This next new tool is going to be really handy in helping you debug, uh, especially if you've got tricky little things going on in your scene that you really need to pay close attention to. Uh, so to help uh, illustrate, I've made a rectangle in my scene that I'm controlling here with some uh, loop animation set really, really fast uh, to trigger a random rotation and make the arrow spin around very, very quickly to random angles. Uh, you'll notice over here on the left hand side we've now got an advanced frame button which is really cool. So it's going to allow us to step forward to just the very next frame of calculation uh, to help further illustrate what's going on as well. I'm going to switch to simulate a video. Uh, so let's bring it open and you'll see if I pause, we have now paused the video and my arrow is still but I can now step through frame by frame and we're looking at individual little moments of calculation uh, on the way my loop animation is pulsing to make uh, the arrow turn around as well as frame by frame of the simulator video there. So very cool. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier uh, to debug tricky things as they're kind of unfolding in your scene and just really inspect and see what's going on there. We've updated the used by assets section in the scene to make it a bit easier to work out which, uh, what relationships we have between different assets, either directly or indirectly that you've set up inside your scenes. So here you can see I've got this uh, cool rocket inside my Spark AR scene. And if I select, for example, the emissive texture here, over on the right in the properties inspector, I can scroll down to the used by section. And we'll see here under used by, I now have the material listed. But there's also a tree here. I can drop this down and inspect what else is using that. So to which uh, objects is this material assigned? Uh, and I know that this texture is being used by this material as well. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier to work out uh, where my assets are going in my scene and how they're all connected. It's a nice handful of new features in this version of Spark. It's going to make it a little bit easier to debug your scenes, a little faster and more fluid to get cool creative stuff happening in your scenes. And we, as always, we can't wait to see what you make using them. Speaking of, today's cover image effect comes from Kenichiro Takamatsu called Kasugi Yu. Uh, his handle is KenXXX000 and I just love this one so much. It blows my mind. Uh, so it's a target tracking effect running over the top of a mural in a public bathhouse having this giant character bust through the wall. I just love the animation, the art direction, the creativity here, the color scheme, everything about it is just absolutely amazing. So Kenichiro, thank you so much for everything you're doing. We love seeing this work, it's so inspiring. And as, same goes for all of you. We love seeing what everyone's making out there. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful time. Uh, by all means, drop any comments, any feedback you have underneath this video. And until next time, happy creating, and I'll see you soon.